Hey guys, welcome back. Today we have the Hexstrom uh, Viking. Uh, this is a uh, Swedish brand, um, but it's actually now um, uh, manufactured in China. Uh, I believe this brand has been around since uh, uh, 65, 1965, uh, but they uh, stopped production in uh, Sweden in uh, 2000. Uh, in sorry, in 1979. The brand was uh, revived in uh, uh, 2004, uh, so uh, they are, I believe they are all made in uh, uh, China right now. Okay, uh, so uh, this guitar, uh, as you could see, uh, uh, the, the brand, the model Viking has been around since the beginning. Um, uh, it was a bit different in the sense that when uh, in the 60s they it actually had a, uh, a inline six type of uh, headstock. It was more of like a, it looks a lot like a uh, Fender uh, type of a Stratocaster type of headstock with inline uh, uh, six uh, where the tuners are uh, uh, done that way. Uh, so now I believe. Uh, they, uh, uh, I guess maybe for copyright uh, reasons, they have actually opted for uh, this um, shape. Uh, I think it looks like a sail. Either that or it looks like a, an acid trip, uh, Gibson type <laughs> of, uh, uh, of headstock. Uh, but uh, having said that, they also have a, like a reissue, I think a 67, they call it the 67, uh, Viking reissue uh, 2 uh, and uh, they do come with the uh, Fenderish type of headstock so um, the uh, guitar spec wise uh, it has the, its own um, uh, pickup it has the uh, they call it the HJ50 uh, pickups uh, um, it has a trademark uh, resonator fretboard. Now the uh, fretboard, uh, I wouldn't know what kind of wood it is. It's a resonator, they call it the resonator. Uh, but it's uh, dark, looks a lot like a, uh, uh, like ebony. So it, it, it looks good uh, in, in that sense. Uh, same with the, uh, uh, the construction, it's a uh, ply uh, uh, construction maple and uh, uh, wood uh, uh, top, it's an arch top with a trapeze type of uh, uh, stop tail and a, uh, a tunematic bridge. Uh, it does not have the uh, fancy um, uh, coil split, which I uh, I'm not a big fan of, mainly because the uh, um, uh, the uh, volume drop when you actually switch to single coil from humbucker is quite significant. Uh, it's an arch uh, back also, so it's a nice uh, arch top and back uh, bindings. And um, workmanship, it's really, really good in the sense that um, the uh, frets are fairly dressed. Uh, uh, bear in mind, this guitar is retailing for, uh, I believe it's about uh, 600 US dollars. Uh, so if you want to compare it with the um, uh, 
uh, Epiphone. I'll do that in another video. Uh, it's about 100 US dollars uh, difference, but uh, I see this to be a, a, a bit of an upgrade from the Epiphone. Uh, also, it has a uh, TUS GraphTech uh, nut, which actually helps with this tuning stability. This guitar comes with a uh, with their in, uh, own design, uh, uh, their own uh, tuners. This is Hexstrom uh, with a uh, unique type of um, uh, uh, tuner uh, pegs. Uh, so, what else? Uh, uh, triple binding, I believe it's triple if I count it correctly. It says double one, two, three. Yeah, it's a triple binding over here. Yeah, triple binding. Um, and uh, that's it. So let's check out the guitar, the sounds. Okay, all right. Um, same thing, you know, the, the same stuff i'm using a black star hd1r with the 112 cap with the uh for the overdriven sound i'm using the uh, blues breaker type of uh, a pedal um, that's it so let's check it out okay we're gonna start off with the uh of, uh neck pickup first um before i continue that one point i like also to mention um the neck of the guitar is fairly uh, uh small or thin uh, it's a C shape, but it's a fairly thin, which is um, which they uh, uh, have said that it's actually the one of the fastest neck uh, for this type of guitar that you have uh, that's out there in the market. Um, now this is uh, with the uh, H uh, beam or H pattern uh, truss rod that they have. Uh, a normal truss rod on a guitar is usually like a rod shape. Now, however, they actually put in a uh, more like a uh, uh, H uh, constructed like an H uh, beam or an H uh, shape so being an H shape uh, they are uh, able to make it thinner yet uh, also rigid being thinner it's also made of alloy uh, it's also uh, more uh, rigid so uh, they have managed to achieve to, uh, to actually have a uh, the neck without the uh, problems of you know of it being bowing and stuff like that when you use a higher gauge okay so we're gonna start off with the uh, neck pickup and I guess that's it we're gonna dime everything neck pickup the hex from Viking <laughs> two pickups <laughs> pickup Okay, now we're gonna try the overdriven sound. We're gonna start off with the uh, uh, neck pickup. <coughs> Thank you. 
Now we're gonna move to the middle position, both pickups activated. <laughs> Bridge pickup. Okay, so uh, my uh, take on the guitar. Number one, um, the neck, uh, it is small. And as you know, I'm not a, a big fan of small neck guitars, but this is, uh, I would say, uh, quite uh, bearable uh, in the sense that, yeah, it is small, but uh, you know, you could still get used to it. Uh, so, um, as compared to some other guitars uh, where uh, the small neck it makes it a bit difficult for you to you know if you have to switch from one guitar to the other it takes a bit of getting used to but this I had no problem getting used to it it's uh, uh, they claim it to be a, a faster neck so uh, I would actually, uh, yeah, if you are a shredder looking for a um, F hole or a, a semi hollow, uh, uh, what do you call it? A shredder looking for an F hole. <laughs> okay, uh, if you're looking for a semi uh, hollow guitar, this would be a a a, 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 a good guitar to get. A, a, it's a center block, same thing. Um, I do find the pickups a bit hotter as compared to the uh, Epiphone uh, uh, So I guess that's where if you are a shredder type uh, of guitar guitarist you might uh, this might be up to your alley uh, I did notice a bit of feedback uh, uh, A bit more than normal no, no, not really, I guess. There were a few times when I heard it like it was about to get into a, a feedback. But uh, neck-wise, it's, it's actually uh, bearable. Uh, those who are used to a bigger neck, maybe you might not like it, but even though you uh, uh, you do, I mean, even though, you, you, even though when you play with this, you have no problem getting used to it. Uh, workmanship, it's really really good uh, in the sense that uh, I've got no complaints uh, the, the, the frets are decently dressed uh, the uh, uh, resonator fretboard looks good uh, it's as I said it's an ebony type I'm not sure what the resonator uh, uh, guitar is uh, resonator wood is um, um, other than that, uh, no nonsense uh, 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 coil splitting uh, capability. Now the thing about coil splitting to me, um, if I, I guess it, it's something that that every passive pickups uh, have a problem with, uh, in the sense that every guitar uh, have that phenomenon of it uh, dropping. Uh, so maybe I guess uh, if it was an active pickup uh, uh, type of a pickup, uh, they could lessen the effect of uh, of the volume drop. So uh, as I said, uh, I like the fact that it's simple. There's no um, uh, call splitting, uh, which only adds to the cost and not so much on the performance. Uh, trapeze neck, uh, trapeze tailpiece. Uh, I was not a fan of it. 
uh, but I have no problem uh, with the uh, tuning stability uh, I guess the uh, graph tech uh, 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 nut really helps with that uh, tuners is decent it's nice and smooth uh, playing wise it's comfortable so um, I guess if you're looking for an alternative uh, Epiphone alternative though this is a bit more expensive or a uh, um, ES335 uh, alternative uh, if you're more of a shredder type guitar guitarist <laughs> I would actually uh, recommend this guitar. Um, um, I've looked through the uh, newer uh, catalog, the uh, the uh, latest catalog, and I've noticed that uh, all the uh, uh, Viking series, they have the deluxe, they have the uh, 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 reissues, they have the uh, the one with the uh, baritone, you know, uh, which is a uh, twenty. Okay, this is a twenty-four point seven five uh, scale length. So very uh, uh, what do you call it? Very um, uh, uh, ES three three five uh, type. Uh, they also have the twenty-five uh, strat type of twenty-five point five scale length. Also. Uh, also, they also have a uh, 24.5 from the catalog, uh, which is uh, a bit shorter from the 75. Uh, so uh, they have different scale length on this. But all of them now come with the uh, block inlays. I'm a big fan of a block inlay uh, looking fretboard because I guess it looks more expensive, more premium like. Uh, uh, but this is, I guess, this is the older model. Uh, in the, in the earlier, that's how you actually uh, differentiate between a normal Viking and a Viking Deluxe is from the uh, from the uh, block inlays, and also the other model where you actually have a vibrato. I think it's called a tram tremo tremo uh, Viking tremo tremo Viking. Uh, but um, other than that, the I think the earlier model had the uh, uh, split coils. But the uh, newer models do not have it. But uh, so real quick, guys, would I recommend this guitar? Yeah, um, actually, honestly speaking, I did not um, uh, plan to get this guitar. Someone traded this guitar with me uh, with the uh, LTD uh, Viper. The LTD Viper, even though I love it, uh, you know, um, I did not actually play much of it. I played more of the um, uh, SG. Uh, the Gibson SG so when someone uh, on the internet uh, I put it up for sale and someone uh, offered to trade with this and so I went ahead and I'm um, actually I'm quite happy with the trade so guys uh, check this guitar out it's uh, about 600 US for this pack uh, the, the deluxe I guess is nicer with the uh, uh, with the flamed uh, top uh, this one is more plain. Uh, it comes in a variety of col colors. Uh, that's, that's it, guys. It's Swede, the uh, Swedish Hagstrom Swedish brand that's now actually made in China, and I think it's very, uh, very, very uh, decent guitar for 600 US dollars. Okay, take care, guys.